the 504 Sit-In 20th Anniversary Committee presents Still Photos, Newspaper Clippings, and Film Footage from Actual News Broadcasts, April 1977. Kitty Cohn. No otherwise qualified handicapped individual in the United States shall, solely on the basis of his handicap, be excluded from the participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. The Power of 504. On April 5, 1977, people with disabilities across the nation demonstrated to demand that regulations implementing Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act be signed into law. The demonstrations spontaneously erupted into sit-ins. In San Francisco, over 100 people made the federal building our home for 26 days. The demonstrations, the 504 rally logo, a profile of a wheelchair with a clenched fist inside the wheel, Disabled demonstrators in front of the San Francisco Old Federal Building. Some of the demonstrators occupied an area outside the office of H.E.W. Secretary Joseph Califano. When Califano appeared, he praised their cause but said there were problems such as enforcement. However, he promised action. I will sign a set of 504 regulations by early May. An outdoor demonstration in San Francisco. People on stage in front of a crowd. One of them is signing to the group. A handicap demands that Section 504 of the Civil Rights Act be signed. It was passed by Congress in 1974. It guarantees the rights of the handicapped in education and employment. The Ford administration never implemented the act. And now the new HEW Secretary, Joseph Califano, says he will sign it in May. The handicapped want him to sign it now. The San Francisco sit-in a collage of newspaper clippings about the bill and the protest. Now is an overnight sit-in. Actually, the demonstration is going on throughout the entire nation, Washington, New York, Denver, here in San Francisco. It all started this morning here at the old federal building on 50 Fulton when an incident took place outside. Immediately after that demonstration this morning, the handicap started invading the building. It's the old federal building, which is now the HEW headquarters. They spent most of the day in the office of the regional director here. Disabled protesters move inside offices, clapping and chanting, holding up signs. Many are in wheelchairs or holding white canes. One woman is signing the protest chants. And I've just gotten word to you that these people are now locked into the building. At 6 o'clock, this building did close down. However, about a half hour ago, they came up with an agreement. None of these people are going to be arrested or moved out of this building. Some members of the HEW staff will be remaining here with them throughout the night. Those people who are here right now will be locked in. If they want to leave, it's all right, but they can't come back in. Food we hear is being brought over by Delancey Street. However, the Salvation Army has not been able to come up with blankets or cots, that sort of thing, so they are still frantically out looking for that. What about the restroom facilities and that sort of thing there? Are they equipped to handle that many handicapped people, and could they get that help? They absolutely are not equipped to handle them. The regional director asked before 4 o'clock if he could try to get out of this room because he needed to go to the restroom. And the group here said, no, we have had to learn all of our lives to control our bladders, and you must learn that lesson now, too. There are approximately 75 or more who are taking part in this sit-in. This makes this the largest sit-in in the nation currently going on concerning the disabled and the handicapped. In Washington, there are about 40 people sitting in the outer office of the HEW uh, secretary, Joe Califano, and there are about seven people in New York. 98 people stayed overnight in the offices used by regional HEW director Joe Maldonado. The 50 who remain at this hour say they have no intention of leaving. Judy Human. There are people that want to stay here until, and there is a significant number of those people. Quite frankly, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to put a lot of pressure on us. When we asked them questions yesterday about 504, and we said to them, have you ever read 504? Every one of the people that we had in that office said no. 
I mean, I think that they should thank us for being here and welcome the opportunity that finally they're going to get educated about the law that they're supposed to be enforcing. HEW reacts. Inside the building, handmade signs on the walls, people using pay phones, people playing cards. 130 disabled and handicapped spent the second night of the sit-in in a string of offices on the fourth floor of the building. HEW officials are stiffening their uh, easy attitude about the demonstrators. All outside phone lines, except one emergency line, have been cut off. Incoming calls, however, are still uh, coming through. Food still is being delivered into the building, but demonstrators no longer can enter. If they leave the building, well, they just stay out. By now, this demonstration here in San Francisco is clearly symbolic. The group which left the Washington, D.C. offices of HEW yesterday afternoon were the only ones who really had direct access to Secretary Joseph Califano. Any demonstration here in San Francisco, well, can only be to show support, but it can't do anything tangible to get that anti-discrimination law signed right now. D.C., L.A., New York forced out. San Francisco digs in. Demonstrators asleep on the floors and stairways. They're tired. They're grubby, they're uncomfortable, but their spirits are soaring. The sit-in at San Francisco's HEW headquarters now is in its third day, and 125 disabled and handicapped are pledging they'll continue the sit-in through tomorrow night, if not longer. The squeeze is on, though. Hot water has been turned off on the fourth floor, where the occupation army of cripples has taken over. The demonstration here is now on its fourth day. It is by far the largest and longest protest ever organized by disabled people in this area. But the problem on this, the fourth day, is still the same as it was on Tuesday, trying to get the attention of the Washington. Demonstrators march in front of the old Fed, holding up signs that read 504 now. CeCe Weeks. One thing, it's the first really militant thing that disabled people have ever done and we feel like we're building a real social movement and we want people to listen to us we have tried negotiations they do not work and at this point we are non-negotiable we want those regulations signed the cause is drawn the support of rank and trial HEW workers labor unions church groups farm workers the gray and black panthers california legislators and the governor he might be the mayor of san francisco but it wasn't enough for george Moscone and other city officials on federal turf today they came to the HEW offices to endorse and assist the handicapped. But the federal officials drew the line when it came to installing a device which converts a sink into a makeshift shower. And that's where the mayor and his delegation discovered the limits of their authority. George Moscone on the phone. Well, thank you for trying anyhow. All right, Jeff. The shower's on or off, Mayor. Huh? The shower's on or off. We can't give any permission to the showers. What was his reasoning? He's not running a hotel. A woman washes her hair in the sink. Oh, now that feels so good. Oh, Lord, it feels good. Oh, it feels so good. 